Hi guys, Black Wolf, and I am reading chapter 21 yeah. of the False Prince. Errol entered my room that morning with clothes I had worn when Connor first brought me here. Finally, I said, why the delay? Errol hesitated, finally deciding that instead of answering, he'd ask whether I had my reward for him. I don't know what you're talking about, I said lightly, but if you're ever in the library, there's a small bump in the pages of Connor's family history. You might, stri you might straighten it out. Errol grinned. No offense, sir, but all three of you came in here empty-handed. It might be wise for me to ask where the coin came from. I shook my head. The truth is, Errol, that would not be wise at all. Thanks for returning my clothes. Now get out and leave me alone. I can put those, those clothes away, sir. So can I. Close the door behind you. When he left, I unfolded the clothes to inspect them. They'd been washed, and a rip in the side of my shirt was mended. But otherwise, they seemed the same as before. They were so much more like me. I didn't belong in, in the silks and fine weaves Connor accustomed me in, us in. They weren't comfortable. I didn't feel like a gentleman while wearing them, and certainly not like a prince. I felt like a fraud, which was the truest definition of the word I was. Before folding the trousers, I checked the pockets. My eyes widened, and I yelled for Errol to come back into the room. I had something in this pocket, I said. Where is it? Errol shook his head, but he clearly knew the answer. You had nothing of value in there, sir. I moved closer to him, and his face paled. Did you throw it out, then? In almost a whisper, Errol said, Connor heard you wanted these back. He insisted on expecting them before they returned to you. If anything is missing, sir... You should ask him. Minutes later, I stormed into Connor's small dining room, slamming the door against the wall. Where's my gold? Where's Mott? Connor asked. He should have escorted you. He doesn't know I left. Where is it? I can't imagine what you're talking about. Now come sit and have some breakfast. Just you to, to a seat near Rodin and Tobias, who are both staring at me as if I'd gone completely insane. I had no intention of sitting. The gold in the pockets of the clothes I wore before coming here. You took it. That's what this is about, Connor laughed. Stupid boy. That rock you carried was in gold. Yes, it is, and it's mine. Connor shook his head. It's imitated gold, Sage. You probably brought it from Swindler in the market, please. It was a gift, and it's real. I want it back. No, Connor. Connor folded his hands together. You're training to become a prince, even a king. A king wouldn't carry imitated gold in his pocket. Study hard to become royalty, and I'll see that you carry real gold wherever you go. We're all imitators here, so if you write about the gold, then there's no, there's no more appropriate thing for me to carry than the rock, that rock. Where is it? It's mine now, Connor said. I'm sure I'll find a successful purpose for it one day. Maybe a skipping stone in the nearby river. Now please, sit down. We're all about to discuss, discuss the royal lineage. You discuss it, I said. I've got better things to do, and I stormed out. I didn't make it to reading or history lessons that morning. Tobias and Ronan and I were on our way to, out to the stables that afternoon when Mott and Craig and Joe Torres. I was eating an apple swiped from the kitchen, but the expressions on their faces, I didn't think I'd get to finish. They look angry, Tobias said to me. What did you do? It's always something I've done, I said. Don't you and Ronan ever do anything worth their attention? It's always something you've done, Ronan agreed. Although I was tempted, there was no point in running. We were trapped between the stables and the house. So they'd catch me anyway. Besides, whatever punishment was coming my way, I didn't need to complicate it further. Craig placed both his hands on my chest and shoved me into to the ground. Sure enough, the apple rolled out of my hands and into the dirt. Where is the rock? he asked. The, the fall to the ground knocked the breath from me. But I still muttered, it's gold. She stole it from the master. Who stole it from me? What I did only set the universe back in order. You don't want this fight, Sage, Mott warned. Now please, where's the rock? I set my jaw forward and dug in and dug the heel of my boot into his, into the dirt. Maybe he is right, but I wasn't going to admit it. Take him, Mott said to Craigan, who pulled out his knife and ordered me to stand. When I did, he rested a knife to my neck and grabbed my arm. With Craigan by my side and Mott on my heels, we walked back to Frozenwood. Connor was waiting for me in the office, standing behind his white oak desk. Craig threw me into the chair in front of the desk, and he and Mott stood on opposite sides of me. Where is the rock? Connor asked coldly. Isn't it in your desk where you left it? I countered with an equal coolness to my voice. That set Connor off. He nodded at Craig, and who slapped me hard across the sheet. I tasted blood in my mouth and closed my eyes a moment before this thing eased enough that I could open them. I bought you from the orphanage, Connor said. 
That means I own you, which means I own everything that belongs to you. That rock is mine. If it's not real gold, then why do you want it, I asked. Because I don't want you to have it. I will not present someone in the corner who carries imitated gold in his pocket. Where is it? Maybe you lost it, I said. Craig can slap me again, harder this time. Take him to the dungeon, Connor whispered. Do what you must, but leave no scars. No, wait! My eyes widened as fear gripped me. I knew what would happen there. Don't do this, Connor. It's just a rock. Is that what you want to hear? Connor pressed both hands flat on his desk as he leaned toward me. What I want to is for you to bend to my will. If I tell you to jump from a cliff, I want you to jump. If I tell you to swim to the far side of the ocean, I want you to swim. I don't care about that rock. But if I tell you that it's no longer yours, then I will have your loyalty, respect, and obedience. I'll give you one last chance. Where is it? My heart pounded so loudly in my ears that I barely heard him. All I knew was that he would not get that rock, even if my life depended on it. And I suspected that it did. Take him, Connor said. Mott and Craigan grabbed each of my arms and literally dragged me, kicking and screaming, out the door. Hey guys, so that was chapter 21. Uh, please don't forget, that was, I know, that was a really short chapter. But please don't forget to look for the False Prince part, audiobook part. 22 because it will be there and it's that one's really short chapter it's actually probably going to be five minutes or so like the other chapter was because it was really short and so uh please subscribe and if you would like me uh please give me some challenges or something because i'm bored on my mind but don't forget to look up the false prince audiobook part 22 it will be there and i will probably do some other audiobooks if you would like me so I can put out a list of which books that I have available to do an audiobook for and there we go so uh please please look up the false prince part 22 or the false prince audiobook part 22 it will be there and uh subscribe bye bye